The Uvalde massacre, Robb Elementary School, that left 19 children and two teachers dead, is one of more than 600 mass shootings in 2022 so far. Shootings that are increasingly leading to legal action for not just the shooters, but against gun manufacturers as well. Sandra Torres, who lost her 10-year-old daughter during the Uvalde shooting, has filed a federal lawsuit against Daniel Defense, the manufacturer of the AR-style semi-automatic rifle used in the shooting. Torres is following a legal path increasingly used by those directly affected by mass shootings. Back in September, three families of students who survived the shooting filed a federal lawsuit against Daniel Defense as well. Both lawsuits center on what the plaintiffs call aggressive ads that recklessly endanger kids. And these kinds of lawsuits are springing up across the country. It almost creates this monster. Antonio Ramanucci is one of several attorneys representing survivors of the Highland Park shooting that left seven people dead and 48 others injured against gunmaker Smith & Wesson. Within the first few seconds, while most people were unaware of what was happening, I was hit for the first time. The idea behind these lawsuits echoes a case brought by the parents of Sandy Hook shooting victims, arguing the marketing of the weapon violates state consumer protection laws. I've never seen an advertisement where that gun is pointed at a deer or pointed at, a, at, a, at an animal. It all has to do with being a man. That's how these guns are marketed. And these young, impressionable, vulnerable adults want to be men and then they create this story about themselves with the Smith & Wesson. Sandy Hook parents who brought the lawsuit were ultimately awarded $73 million in a settlement with Remington Arms. Back in August, Smith & Wesson CEO put out a statement saying the gun industry is under unprecedented and unjustified attack and blames politicians, the media, and a culture of lawlessness for ongoing gun violence. The industry argues that other manufacturers are typically not held liable for the misuse of their products, citing how car companies are not sued over drunk driving accidents. For years, gun manufacturers have been shielded from legal action by the Protection of Lawful Commerce and Arms Act or PLACA. The 2005 law was written to protect gun makers from lawsuits when the weapons they manufactured are used in crimes. PLACA is, is a, a very broad protection, right? It's kind of a, uh, one of the rare industry-specific laws that Congress passes to immunize it from lawsuits. Jake Charles is a Pepperdine law professor specializing in firearms and violence. Charles says the $73 million settlement between Remington Arms and the Sandy Hook families has really opened the door for these other legal fights. It does set a precedent kind of in both ways of thinking about that. So one is in terms of legal precedent. It also stands as precedent in kind of the more colloquial way that we think of. Is this a precedent? for future action. And that is that it's a large settlement, right? $73 million. Sandra Torres' lawsuit also names the city, school district, and several police departments for what it calls a complete failure. An investigative report of the law enforcement response to the Uvalde shooting says while it didn't, quote, find any villains, there was extensive systemic failures and egregiously poor decision-making. Jamal Andrus, Newsy, Dallas, Texas.